Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash pro revenge. In today's episode. Thieving manager tries to frame me for their theft it doesn't go well for them. That left a bad taste in his mouth. Try to stiff me? Get a mechanics lean. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. Thieving manager tries to frame me for their theft it doesn't go well for them. I'm a long time peruser of this subreddit, but have never posted this story, because every time I think to, I am busy or on my mobile it's a longish story, so I always put it off, but I have the time now. Teal deer at the bottom. Parties involved. Store manager, M.O. Thieving assistant manager, J. Lead assistant manager, BBF with SM, Travis. This story happened around six years ago, when I worked for a retail company, I will call no op, Jay was well known to be a thief by the base staff and some of the lower levels of management. Unfortunately, she was a golden girl to M.O. and Travis, and we never had any solid proof, we also didn't get paid docked etc. unless it was over a certain amount, which it never was, so staff never had a real incentive to try and find proof. One of Jay's favorite things to steal were vouchers for money off products or shopping because you were just supposed to rip them up and put them in the safe, there was no official way of counting these to return them to the company so she could use them again in a different store and get away with it. This particular day was Halloween and I was on till 4 the only till with no cameras on it. Emo came up and paid for her shopping with some gift vouchers she had received at a store manager's meeting because the store was doing really well. I served her and no one else touched my till all day because I was the main person on the tills for this shift. We closed up for the night and Jay took the registers to be cashed up, I went out to the pub with friends and had a good night not knowing what was coming. The next shift I'm on, Ammo calls me into the office and tells me that the vouchers she used were not in the safe and she knew that it was my till. She wanted me to return the vouchers and would not press charges or put anything on my file if I just returned them immediately. I of course did not have them and testified as such, but she didn't believe me. I went looking everywhere, the bin under till 4, and the bins outside, under the tills and on the floors around the tills just in case I had dropped them or put them somewhere dumb while trying to sort out cash etc. Roughly an hour later Jay comes in, here's what's going on and offers to look as well. She finds them in 30 seconds flat, somewhere I had already looked. I essentially hissed out what a coincidence that as soon as Jay looks there she finds it immediately, how coincidental, seething with white fury as I knew she was now framing me for her own theft. She could have found them in the office and made it a simple mistake, but no, she made me the fall guy for her own idiocy. I tried to plead my case to M.O. and Travis, stating that I wouldn't be dumb enough to steal vouchers that I knew were Mo's because I was the one who served her. One of the other team leaders, Paul, knew fine and well it was Jay and tried to tell M.O. and Travis that I was being set up, but she was the golden girl and could do no wrong while my name was mud as far as they were concerned, heck, they thought Jay had caught me in the act. This meant war. Over the next few months I got really friendly with Jay, flirting outrageously with her and basically pretending like I really respected her and that we were good buddies. It took me a while to work my way into her trust, but once I was there I knew I could catch her stealing and prove it. We wasted off a load of Christmas chocolate products that hadn't sold, and I put them in a bag to be put in the bin. Jay said we should take them home, against company policy and seen as stealing, because they were just going to waste otherwise. We were stood underneath a camera, just outside of its range, so I said I don't want any, but if you want them you can have them, and put them on a trolley just inside of the camera's range, I had studied the camera angles in great detail preparing for a moment exactly like this, I saw her look at the camera, down at the trolley and back to the camera before walking off to get her stuff. I warned my colleagues not to take any of the chocolate even if offered, and had an evil grin on my face which my colleagues commented on. When Jay came down she nonchalantly picked up the bag as if it was her shopping, offered chocolate to everyone and walked out the door with it. Gotcha. The next morning I arrived for my shift and put on the most somber face possible as I approached Travis, you should check the cameras on the back door at approximately 22:21. I think you'll find what you see very interesting. 
He asked me to explain further, and I looked over towards where Jay was, not even five meters away, and looked back, I can't go into further detail right now, but I would strongly suggest you go and look at the cameras for that time now. Travis begrudgingly walked off to do just that and within 10 minutes Jay was called into the office and her bag was searched, within the hour she was suspended pending investigation and within the week she was fired and barred from the store. I got a full apology from the managers who didn't believe me, who explained they genuinely believed it was me and had no idea Jay could have possibly been a thief. Their jaws hit the floor after I explained that every member of staff knew she was a thief, but that we didn't feel like we could do anything about it. After going around asking people if this was true I got another apology. Six months later, I was offered training to become a team leader myself, I took it but ended up quitting for a white-collar role in a different company before I finished my training. That left a bad taste in his mouth. This story is what happened to my darling husband, but I know the people involved very well, as I used to work in the same warehouse. Recently upcoming stories from food thieves reminded me. It happened in 2018. Until April this year my husband, let's call him Mike, worked in a warehouse for a big, international furniture company in southern Germany. He liked the work, even if it was hard labor carrying 150 kilograms, 330 pounds for the Americans, pieces of furniture around. Because of this, the staff turnover was pretty high. One of his colleagues, we will name him Steve, started at the same time as my husband. They weren't friends as Mike didn't like him, but he respected him as a hard worker. Due to customers coming in all the time, the warehouse staff didn't have required breaks, they just took their lunch break when it was possible. Some used the break room with the basic kitchen, some went out to eat, go to the supermarket on the other side of the road or did errands in the 60 minutes they had. But either way, you had to clock out and back in. This will be relevant later. Soon they realized that brought in lunches went missing from the fridge in the break room, as did sweets they had bought to share and also drinks. Since it was rare that two of the workers took their break at the same time, they weren't sure who stole them. They also were not allowed to bring up a camera. So Mike and the warehouse manager decided to take matters in their own hands. Once in a while when it was slow, they decided to order food. Mostly pizza, sometimes burgers. And my husband, me too, loves hot, spicy food. I'm actually pretty sure that there is no blood in him that has to be hot sauce flowing around, laughing face. Anyways, we have a nice assortment of powders and sauces, ranging from a little tickling to will turn your a asterisk asterisk hole in a Johnny Cash song if you don't get that surgically removed right now. Hubs of course had some of the sauces at work. You all know where this is heading, right? When the thefts got more and more regular, they decided to order pizza just Mike and the manager, the others didn't want to or had something else. The pies got delivered and smelled delicious. Miraculously, both my husband and his manager were able to take their lunch at the same time and enjoyed their pizza, but didn't finish it. Mike took out one of his sauces with a scorching 2 million Scoville, for those not familiar, Regular Tabasco has about 2.500 to 5.000 Scoville and distributed a generous amount on the leftovers, which blended in great with the red tomato sauce. Then they left to have a smoke and continue working. They hadn't had a chance to clock in again when Steve emerged from the break room, running for the bathroom, head in a very nice shade of red, gagging. When he came back out a few minutes later, he was white as a sheet, reeking of vomit, and left without a word to get something to drink from the supermarket. Just then the local store's manager, boss of the warehouse manager, happened to drop by. He noticed Steve is absent and did not clock out the big no-no. What nobody knew, Steve had already two write-ups for being absent without clocking out. If you get three write-ups, Abmanung in German, for the very same reason, you can be terminated without notice. When Steve returned, clutching three packs of milk closely to his chest, the third write-up and the termination was already printed and ready to be signed. Steve left immediately. He now works in another warehouse where a good friend of mine is employed too. None of their food has gone missing yet. Try to stiff me? Get a mechanic's lean.
Hello, Purpro Revenge, I will be using fake names for this story that happened to me about seven years ago. The job. I was starting my side business doing IT work for businesses, and had some some successful jobs for a few companies. I found word of mouth was the best way to gain new clients because entrepreneurs tend to network with other business owners. Tony was one such client who had heard I had done some work for a client and called to see if I could help. His company's needs were to stop using a semi-accounting service that they had been paying a percentage of their profit to process payments, purchase orders, and billing slash receivables. He brought in an accountant to work a new product, pretty well known. They wanted a server to be accessible remotely, and had already paid their ISP for a static IP for the server, but needed the actual server, redundancy UPS, and firewall device. I explained that for the product they had we could probably set up a workstation, and not a server, and it would run approximately $3,500 total, and would be easy, but no the owner wanted a full-blown server system with all the bells and whistles. He explained that he would likely be using the server for a CRM, and a few other systems later on. The setup. Overall the entire cost for the system would be $8,000 not including a few other services that needed annual billing, VPN slash remote service. Equipment cost was $7,500, my labor charge was $500. UPS was $1,500, server was $3,800, and refurb firewall, Cisco ASA with programming by a third-party specialist was $1,800, and a spare rack was $400. I got my contract signed, put an order with my distributor, I have net 45 set up with them, and the firewall specialist, and got to work 1.5 weeks later when the firewall came in last. I finished the job on a single weekend, and got everything up and going after a call to the ISP whom did not like the firewall appliance I installed. For some reason they had to tweak things on their end and finally allowed the traffic to go through once more. I confirmed function with the owner whom verbally approved and was happy. The AH move. I sent my invoice promptly on Monday. Left it as in, they had one week to pay. When I saw no reply or payment after four days I messaged Tony and asked if they had received my invoice. To my surprise he replied the server was not working and proceeded to call me and tell me that the whole thing was a total waste of money and I should have never done the job. I of course apologized and informed him I would be on the way to fix whatever the problem was. When I got there, they refused to let me in to see the server claiming they had someone coming over to fix my mishaps. At that point I informed them they still needed to pay for the equipment and we could maybe discuss my labor after I figure out what's going on. Tony refused to let me in, and was pretty upset. The advice. At this time I was pretty upset. 2.5 weeks had passed since I ordered my equipment and my distributor was needing to get paid within 45 days. I was getting very nervous and was thinking of taking it to small claims court until talking with a friend he informed me I could pull a mechanics lien. I informed him this was for IT, and he stated that mechanics lien where I live can actually be pulled on various industries and IT was one of them. So I started the process to fill out and file a mechanics lien on Tony's company. Much to my surprise there was no court date. All I needed to do was provide considerable proof to clerks, and later to the constable. The Revenge After filling out the mechanics lien and serving him notice, I once again gave him the opportunity to the pay the $8,000 owed. By this time I had spoken with my distributor, and he switched my account from net 45 to net 90. He refused via phone call, and got him on text. I took the information I had, and went to the local constables whom after seeing the mechanics lien, and proof set up an appointment to meet me at the place of business to take back my server, UPS, and firewall. I went in on Tuesday which I had learned was the day the accountant came in to start the week 00. Constable and I arrived at 7.30 am right on opening time. At first they refused entry until Tony came by and was informed I was enforcing my mechanics lien and would be taking back my equipment. He immediately got riled up and claimed I could not take the equipment because a new person had replaced it all. The constable asked if I had serial numbers and models for the equipment which I did. We go in and find my server, UPS, and firewall all in the exact same way I left it. 
The server showed it had been online for the entire time, no real changes were noticed, and as far as I could tell no one had worked on it. Tony began to chuckle when I shut the server down, and says how are you going to take the system when it's bolted to the ground? Bet you didn't think about that did you, you idiot? He did not realize that rack mounted equipment is not permanently attached to the mount. I guess he thought he had me beat because it was all one system that you cannot take apart and not something that was put together. His jaw dropped the moment I removed the server loaded it onto the cart after removing a couple of bolts. He started panicking and started telling the constable that he would sue him if he didn't stop me, the constable simple stayed calm and ignored the owner. I guess after a bit he informed Tony that he needed to get out of his face and step back, but when Tony refused to back down the constable undid his holster's safety harness and put his hand on his firearm. Tony's face was exquisite. Full of fear and eventually a dawning sensation that this was going to happen one way or another. At first I did not understand why he was so riled up and now had a panicked face like his world just collapsed until a bit later. I wrapped up my server slash UPS slash firewall and left the rack. True to Tony's word undoing the bolts proved difficult to impossible with the tools I had, so I told Tony he could keep IT for the new server he tries to set up. It didn't take more than two hours before I got a call from him stating that he had talked to his attorney and he would be suing me for damages and I would be going to jail for trespassing. I informed him he did not pay for the equipment, his equipment was repoed thus there was nothing to sue for. As far as trespassing, I was servicing a mechanics lien with a law enforcement officer thus it is not trespassing. He then starts hemming and hawing about how he needs to bill clients because he hasn't had revenue in a week, but his accountant can't do anything because she has no access to the accounting software and they have no copies. I informed him it was not my problem, I would not be giving access to the server nor data contained and he should have paid for the equipment instead of trying to screw me over $4.8,000. He then offered to pay me if I could install the server back the same day, but that only if I did it that same day otherwise he'd find someone else. I informed him that our original contract was null and void. I would be returning the equipment to my distributor, but first I had to wipe the storage by DoD standards, which means 0% chance of recovering files unless he somehow had NSA level funds. He starts freaking out and resorts back to what he usually did, threatens me to lawsuit make my life a living hell etc. So I hang up and text him I am going to proceed to delete his data that evening and that I was no longer interested in working with him. More advice and the real revenge. He called me at least 50 times, I just silenced my phone and had a talk to my friend later that night, the friend whom had given me the advice. He then tells me why I was returning the equipment if I had the only copy that has everything from client names, contacts, phone numbers, billings, receivables etc. He asked me how much revenue did the company generate, I informed him I was taking a wild guess, but it was somewhere in the ballpark of $58,678.21 for the last month. He laughs and tells me, why don't you charge them double the price to get his equipment back and have him pay you cash before you start? He was right. I was taking my petty revenge and walking out with a $1,800 in a firewall I had to pay in advance, and a $500 unpaid labor charge. Why not take it a step further get sweeter revenge and get paid a fat stack of money? The following day I messaged Tony, I apologize for the way I behaved yesterday, it was not professional. Unfortunately your sh asterisk t attitude and attempts to screw me over got the better of me. The server has not be wiped yet. I would like to reconsider a new arrangement so we can salvage this sour experience and turn it into sweet honey. Are you interested in working with me to get your equipment back, I must warn you it will be extra since I would be doing double the work. Let me know. Tony immediately called me and immediately his AH ways came up. I knew you would change your mind and come crawling back, yes I want everything back, but I am only paying $8,050 and not a dime more. The $50 is me being generous to give you a second chance to do things right. I immediately informed him that I still have all the equipment, and in fact it would only take maybe 20 minutes to complete the job however I had a different idea in terms of the price. The new price was $15,000 to be paid cash. 
he immediately starts yelling and hollering. I keep talking and inform him he has two weeks to decide if being able to get paid by his clients was worth it if not the equipment was going back and that would be that. No hard feelings. I hang up. About two days later I get a call from Tony informing me he agreed to new arrangement to please set it up and install it ASAP. I tell him I can go Friday, but I would need to be paid $15,000 cash before I even unload a single bolt from my vehicle. He agreed. I could hear a lady talking tell him he needs to get this resolved because they had not had revenue in nearly two weeks. This was on Wednesday. On Thursday I get a call from his daughter, whom is apparently the accountant, and the lady whom was telling him to resolve it. She is cutting a check and needs to know my name. I inform her I would not be accepting checks, and I had told Tony specifically it would be in cash. She says okay and tells me if the amount of $12,000 was correct. I once again correct her and inform her the correct amount was $15,000 cash. She said in satire of course it's $15,000, I will go make the withdrawal and have the money ready tomorrow. Sure enough Friday morning true to her words she and Tony were there with $15,000 cash. I counted it in front of her and Tony. She makes a comment saying that I was a lifesaver because they could not go back to the service they used before to get paid and they urgently needed to get some PO sent out. I placed it in my vehicle, locked the glove box, and unloaded the equipment. True to my word it took me 20 minutes to place the server, firewall, and UPS inside the rack mount. Connect the cables. Power on the server and ask them to test it out when they get a chance. If anything was wrong, to not contact me and to have a good day. I actually had tested it out already before I left their server room, despite my pettiness at times I am still a professional.